guys, it's Anissa. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I filmed one of my favorite videos to film for you guys. I did a full face of first impressions, testing new makeup. We had a mix of drugstore and high-end products. This is the look I was able to come up with. If you're interested to see some of the products that I tried, then make sure to keep on watching. But before you go any further, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. I post on this channel every four days, so you never have to miss me for too long. If there's a product that you would like to see me test out in either a full face of first impressions or in a review on its own, please let me know down in the comments and I will try to do everything that I can to test that product out for you and tell you my thoughts. I do have an oily slash combo skin type. I wish I would say that more often because it does affect the way that I think about products and it also affects my choice of products. Let's just go ahead and get into it. All right guys, I am super excited to film today's video. We have a lot of products that I have been so excited to try. We're gonna go ahead and start off with brows and today for brows, I am going to be trying this ColourPop Brow Boss and this is in the color soft black. All of this makeup that you guys are seeing has already been hauled in some haul that I've done. I'll go ahead and leave my playlist up here for you guys. That way you can go ahead and check that out. It's a dual ended so on one end you have the spoolie and then on the other end you have the product. Always start on the bottom. The color is perfect. Okay so I really like the color The pigmentation, I would say, is like an 8 out of 10. I love the size of the brow pencil. I prefer a pencil that is more smaller and precise because I don't have super fluffy, nice brows. So I really like something where I can get super precise. This eyebrow has not looked this good in a really long time. The difference is clear. I really love that. See, I like my brow to be very precise and I like a carved out brow, but I don't like a super harsh brow. I really don't fill in this part of my brow too much because I do like it to kind of ombre. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this eyebrow and then we can carve them out. Usually this brow gives me so much trouble and it did, but for my brow to look this good and this be my bad brow, I'm happy. So I like this product, also very affordable. You do not have to order this online. You can get your hands on it at Ulta, but it took me forever to get this product because every time I would go into the store it was sold out. I was like okay there's got to be something good about this if it's always sold out. I really love when I can find affordable options for you guys. I'll be the first person to tell you I love high-end makeup because there's high-end makeup in this video but drugstore makeup especially when it's amazing like this just goes to show you don't have to break the bank to get a nice brow or a nice foundation or a nice eyeshadow palette. We're gonna go ahead and carve them out and this is a product I have not heard anybody talk about. When I saw it I thought I was seeing things because I had never heard anybody talk about it. Laura Mercier Secret Concealer for Under Eyes. This is in the color four. I'm not gonna be using this underneath the eyes. I'm actually going to be using this to carve out my brows because I love pot concealer for carving out my brows. Very, very creamy. Oh, I can already tell I put too much on my brush. You don't need a lot. Just gonna blend it out. It has really, really good coverage. I think I honestly used a little bit too much. And since I did get a little bit of product in my brow, just gonna brush through them and kind of go over the parts that got a little bit lighter due to the concealer. So now I know for the other brow not to use a whole lot. I might even gonna dip back into the product. I wanna use what is left on this brush first. That's how much product came out the brush and I didn't even dip back in. I only carve out the bottom of my brows with a lighter concealer is because it actually kind of gives your eyes a highlight and a lift. And then I will use my foundation to carve out the top. This is actually creamier than the NARS Soft Matte Concealer, which is like my favorite concealer of all time for carving out the brows, but I really like this. It's not cakey looking or anything like that, very skin-like. Now for eyeshadow, I'm going to prime my eyes before I put on any eyeshadow, and we do have a new eyeshadow primer today. This is the NYX Proof It Waterproof Eyeshadow Primer. This is also not a newer product, but it's new to me, so I want to go ahead and try it, because I do love NYX. I think they have really good products. And this claims to be waterproof. It is a more white color, so I'm just gonna start off with a little bit. Usually I'll do one eye off camera and then do the other eye on camera, but I found that I forget what I do on my eyes, so I'm kind of just gonna like film one eye and then 
do the other eye but skip it that way you don't have to watch me do both because that can be repetitive i'm wondering what benefit this eyeshadow is going to bring because it really doesn't correct anything it's a translucent color so maybe it'll just give a sticky base now i used to use concealer on my eyes for eyeshadow primer but i found that it's just a little bit too thick you don't want something super thick because it's just going to make your eyeshadow look cakey i prefer something that is an eyeshadow primer but also has a little bit of color to it and it's preferably a little bit lighter because it does make your shadows pop a little bit more it's tacky so that's why I figured if it wasn't correcting, it would at least be tacky. Now it did lighten a little bit, as you guys can see. And we do have a new eyeshadow palette. I have been so excited. So excited to use this. Today I'm going to be using the ColourPop Nude Mood Palette and this is just what the colors look like. Guys, I felt like I deserved to do a nude eyeshadow look because I've been doing so much color. I've only tried one other ColourPop palette and what I found with that palette is that the colors were a little bit darker on the eye than they were in the pan. I'm going to take this color right here all natural and I'm going to take a fluffy brush and I'm just going to put this in my crease. Oh wow, now see that's lighter. It does have one dark color, but I like when a palette has multiple dark colors because I do like to put a darker color in the crease and then I like to use a different one on the outer crease to darken up the outside of the eye and give dimension. But I'm gonna try to just use the same dark color in the crease and the outer corner because I really don't have much of a choice. Okay, now I can definitely tell that that eyeshadow primer is sticky because I'm having a little bit of a hard time blending. That's okay because I know that my shadows are sticking and you can always sit there and blend. With the same brush, I am going to take this color down here and this is called Moody. And I'm just going to lightly fluff this in my crease because I do like to give dimension to the crease. But I'm hoping that since that other color was a little bit lighter than what I was hoping, that it'll lighten up this color just a little bit. Why I was so excited to try this palette was because of these shimmers in here. Those two shimmers look gorgeous, so I'm super excited to dip into those. Remember, you can never blend too much. Before I go in with my shimmer color, I'm just gonna take this eye crease brush. It's a little small dome brush, and I really want to focus this color moody on the outside to give the eye some dimension. Just really focus that on the outside of the eye. I'm actually gonna do a halo eye, so I'm gonna put this on the outside and the inside. I'm just placing it right now. I'm not uh, blending it out yet. I'm gonna take a clean brush and blend that out. Yeah, it's not as dark as I was hoping but I really don't want to use anything else. When I buy a palette, I want to be able to create a look with just that palette, not, you know, have to use other things, especially if you're traveling, you know, you don't wanna to have to bring like three, four different palettes. You just want one that you can use for everything. I'm going to take this center shade right here called Put On Airs. I wanna try this with a brush first. I'm gonna take a smaller brush and I'm just gonna use it on its own first. I don't wanna spray it with setting spray and just placing that in the center of my eye. It's actually really pretty. And then just bringing that to where my eyelid ends. On the other eye, I'm gonna use setting spray. I feel like it's definitely a little bit easier to apply. This looks more foiled versus this looks more shimmered. Just to make them look the same, I'm just gonna go ahead. Layering it on top, it does seem to be a little bit more pigmented with the setting spray. I kinda wanna go over top with this color right here called wink wink and i just want to put that like at the top where my crease is and see what that looks like I tried it without setting spray and i didn't really get much there now it's showing up i keep forgetting i have hooded eyes so i have to drag it down more than what i think to be honest with you guys i'm kind of underwhelmed with this palette it's not that it's not pretty it's just like i wish that i would have something darker especially for the outside to help kind of give it a little bit more dimension i was able to create a look using just this palette but i don't know if i could really create many more looks with this palette besides the one that I did um, because I only had one really dark color to work with so that had to go on the outside. I mean I could probably do something with these two colors. These are too light. The colors are beautiful. The shimmers especially I loved. They did do better with a brush. I didn't try them with my finger. Um, I should have done that but Hey, what can you do? You live and you learn. I feel like if you are a little bit lighter than me, I think you would have an easier time creating multiple looks with this. When you're darker like me, it's a little bit harder to kind of interchange colors and stuff like that. But it's not a bad palette. I would use it again. This is like the type of palette I would take to travel because I know that 
there's a look that I could do with it. Like I would probably just do the same look every time I did my makeup. Shimmers are beautiful. Mattes were very easy to blend out. The only issue that I did have was at first trying to blend them out, but I think that that was because of the eyeshadow primer. And I don't ever mind that because I think that eyeshadow primer helps intensify the colors of your eyeshadow. And it also helps with lasting power because your eyeshadow has something to stick to. It's not just on your eyelid. That would be one of those palettes if I didn't know what I wanted to do with my eyes one day. I would use that palette. I'm zooming you guys back out because it is time for complexion, my favorite part of makeup. We got a lot of new products, so we need to get moving. I'm just gonna quickly throw on some chapstick before I forget. Usually I'll use a hydrating primer and then a pore filling primer or a mattifying primer. But today I wanted to go ahead and use a primer mist, which is something I don't use very often. This is something that definitely caught my interest. This is the e.l.f. Oil Control Primer Mist, and it claims to be a water-based primer mist that preps the skin for smooth makeup application in the lightweight formula, helps reduce shine and oil for a more matte look. Enriched and purified with water, cucumber and vitamins B and E to nurture and refresh skin. I'm not very big on using setting spray before makeup because I feel like setting spray is setting spray and you don't have anything to set. So I just feel like setting sprays don't really mix very well, especially when they're a mattifying setting spray. I would rather just use a mattifying primer. Now like the NYX Bear With Me, that multitasking spray, that's something that I would use before makeup because it's a setting spray, but it almost helps everything melt together more in a sense, not just mattifies and locks everything in type of setting spray. Spray. So to me, there's two very distinct areas of setting spray. And I'm just using a fan to kind of help soak this into the skin. Definitely has a skincare scent to it. It's not really tacky or anything like that. I don't really feel like it mattified. We'll see how that actually does because I'm not using a mattifying foundation today. First impressions, I don't see a difference in my skin. I don't feel a difference in my skin. Sometimes I'm like, is this just a feel good step? Like, is this just a product that they whipped into a bottle and claims it does this? And you know, you kind of just hope it does it. Now I am going to prime. This is a high end product. This is from Touch and Soul and this is the No Pore Blend Primer. And this is supposed to be smooth and pore covering. Now I have tried a primer from them. It's a more watery jelly based primer and I like that. It's all right. Ew. I just pumped that out and that is straight oil. It does not say shake before use, but I guess it's implied. Okay, that kind of scares me because try to stay away from primers that have oil in them. Just like oil doesn't mix with water, oil really doesn't mix very well with most things, especially when you already have oily skin. You know, the last few videos of this that I've done, it's like the eyes are amazing and then everything else just bing. I pumped it out and it still looks a little bit oily. Feels like a lotion definitely silicone it feels heavy and usually silicone primers that i like do not feel heavy to me it just feels oily that was disgusting it just like spewed out oil it does mattify no the last thing you want especially from a step in your makeup that is like prepping like we haven't even really got to the makeup part you don't want it to feel heavy you're just at the beginning like you're going to be adding stuff to your face i do usually put a little bit extra in my t-zone so i'm not going to do anything differently today that's usually how i do my routine so i want to see how it feels if my foundation is looking weird then i'm going to go ahead and take everything off and restart with a primer that I like because I want to give everything else a fair chance. I shook it and it did nothing. I think it's so thick that me banging on it did nothing anyways. We do have a new foundation though. This is something that I would normally never go for but I've been trying to get outside of my little box of matte long wearing foundations. This right here is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation. Also not a newer product but it's newer to me and I got the color Medium Deep for Macau which is my shade in the soft matte foundation that they just came out with. Not too long ago I did a review on it. I figured that I would give this a try because I also saw a lot of people with oily skin saying that they liked it so I was like okay well I'll give it a try too. This is what the packaging looks looks like NARS kills it in the packaging category. Like if we had to have an Emmys for makeup, best packaging would go to NARS. When we test new foundations on this channel, we always do half sponge, half brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my sponge side first. This is from the e.l.f. Retro Paradise collection. If they don't sell that collection anymore, it comes with two other sponges. They have the same sponge that you can purchase. It's just a different color. It does come with a pump. Okay, I went ahead and shook it. I'm just gonna start with a pump because I have found with foundation, at least for me, less is more. I've kind of realized like, hey, I'm gonna put powder with coverage on top of this. If every little pimple is not covered with the foundation, it's okay because I use a powder foundation with coverage. I don't always use translucent. Just gonna start, that's about two pumps. The pump doesn't go very far, so this is two pumps. And it's funny because this foundation is actually one of my best matches. And I will say, I was worried that this one wouldn't work for me. Some brands claim that the shades are the same across, but they're not always, and this seems to be. Oh, okay. 
has really good coverage. I'm not doing it today because I don't have a new product for this step, but whenever I use a more natural foundation, I always set my primer with powder because I do have oilier skin, but I still like to use foundations that are natural because some of them are really, really good. Some of my favorite foundations are natural foundations. I think I always kind of had the mindset that, oh my gosh, no, I can't use foundations if they're not matte. It's all about accommodation and mixing and matching. And honestly, this isn't really super glowy like I was expecting it to be. It's actually like more of a natural finish. It doesn't feel super heavy, which is what I was worried about, especially with that primer. So I can only assume that with a primer that's not feeling super heavy, it's gonna feel the same way. Very pretty on the skin. I do have a little bit left on my hand, so I'm just gonna go in with that. And I have like some discoloration. This is not the foundation doing this. You guys probably noticed in my last couple of videos, I have like lighter spots on my face right on my cheekbone right here. So I wanna see if I can get that covered. I'm just gonna use a little bit, like not a whole lot. I'm gonna cover it a little bit. So it is buildable, it's not feeling super cakey with me adding more on top of it. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the brush side and I'm just gonna start with one pump. With most foundations I have tried, you will get a lot more coverage with a brush than you will a sponge. So I used like a pump and a third of a pump. I don't even think I've ever told you guys this. I don't put a whole lot of foundation underneath my eyes because I usually use a lot of concealer underneath my eyes. And most of the time I do tend to prefer a sponge for foundation. But when I'm using a foundation with a little bit more of a lighter coverage, I usually will use a brush because you will get a little bit more coverage with a brush than you will a sponge. I'm actually really liking this. I'm surprised that it's not more glowy because it did say that it was a radiant, maybe it's just like a glow with it from within type of thing. I don't know. Definitely medium coverage, not full coverage by any means. And I can definitely tell because some of my beauty marks are peeking through, but I really don't feel the need to go over it. Now, if you're somebody who doesn't set your face, may all the glory be with you, then I feel like you could build this up if you wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and quickly carve out my brows using that foundation because I always carve out my brows with whatever foundation I'm using that day. See, it just makes all the difference. You just have such a more crisp brow and I found too it's very hard for me to get super close to my brows especially when I'm using a sponge because I don't want to get product in my brows. Using like a smaller brush has made all the difference for me. Next is concealer and this is a drugstore brand. Before I bought this brand, I didn't realize that it was owned or created by like a famous actor. I don't know her name, but she is in the movie with Adam Sandler where they go to Africa. Blended, it's a really good movie and she's an amazing actor. She's in a lot of other movies, but she actually owns the brand Flower Beauty. This is the concealer from that brand and this is the Light Illusion Full Coverage Concealer and I went ahead and got the color D23 Deep. The only place that I have been able to find this is CVS. I have not been able to find it in Walmart, Walgreens. So if you guys do know of a store other than CVS that carries this, let me know. The Dofa applicator is already tilted, which I personally like because it makes it a little bit easier to get into the under eye area. It is a more thin consistency. But I'm hoping that the coverage is good on it. I feel like my makeup really never truly comes together until after I put concealer and set underneath the eyes that I'm like, okay, everything's the way that it's supposed to be. And I always say this makeup is really one of those processes that is like, okay, it gets a little bit worse before it gets better. I wouldn't say this is full coverage, but I would definitely agree that it is medium. And I used to color correct, especially when I did not get a lot of sleep. You can't find a concealer that is really covering everything. Try color correcting. It could just be the undertones, the blue undertones in your veins are too strong for a concealer to cover. So sometimes canceling that out with an orange will solve all of your problems. And you don't need a whole lot of any color corrector that you're using. Definitely did brighten. I like, I like. I always like to make sure that my concealer is really blended in nicely before I set it because I think people think that sometimes if your product is looking weird that powder will fix it. But that's not always the case, especially underneath the eyes. Like if it's looking weird before you put powder on it, chances are it's gonna look weird after too. Maybe I can zoom in and show you guys, but it's kind of like hanging on to certain parts. I do have a lot of fine lines naturally, not just underneath my eyes, but also on my eyelids. I always, always, always take a brush and blend out underneath my eyes because there's some things that a sponge just cannot reach and there's nothing wrong with that. Even blending that out did help a little bit, but it is hanging on just a little bit weird. It's like right underneath my eye, not like down here, but like right 
in here. I think I've blended as much as I could, so we're just gonna go for it. I wanna go ahead and set underneath my eyes before I do cream blush. Catrice HD Baking and Setting Loose Powder, and I got the color C05 Neutral Bronze. Catrice is a brand that I really, I don't think I've tried anything from them. I just bought a foundation from them that I wanna try that I heard is really good. I wanted to go ahead and see how this worked underneath the eyes because I do like to use either a translucent powder or a brightening powder or something lighter than the rest of my face because you just used a lighter concealer underneath your eyes, so why would you use something that's the same color as your face? Like, there is no point in using a lighter concealer if you're just gonna set it with something that's the same color as your face. I'm gonna do one side brush, one side sponge. I get a little scared with powder because sometimes powders are different and if you use too much, that will determine if the product is gonna be good or not. I haven't looked up close, but from far away, it definitely is very filtering, gives a soft effect, and it actually gave a little bit more coverage to that concealer. You guys can tell this eye versus this eye. Something that I feel like the drugstore lacks very much so compared to high-end makeup is loose setting powder, um, especially translucent powder. Like it is very hard to find a good translucent powder or even a loose powder that is good and affordable. That actually did help the concealer. It looks better than it did before I set it. I am gonna try a brush, but I'm gonna tell you guys right now, nine times out of 10, I always like to use a sponge, especially when I'm using loose powder underneath the eyes because it helps the product really soak into the skin and work with that concealer versus just sitting on top of it. Now, if I'm using a pressed powder underneath my eyes, I will use usually a brush. I'm gonna use this KVD brush number 25. This has coverage, which is hard to find. I mean, I honestly wasn't even expecting it to have coverage. I just wanted it to set what was there, but I definitely do prefer, I think, the sponge side. I've also never heard anybody talk about this product. First impressions, really love, very soft, does not feel super heavy underneath the eyes, which is a really big thing for me. If there's one part of your face that you do not want to feel cakey or look cakey, it is your under eyes because they are the center of your face. If they're looking crazy, the rest of your face is gonna look crazy. Usually I would do cream blush before my powder, but I was kind of afraid that things were sinking in weird underneath the eyes, so I wanted to go ahead and set first. I've tried this blush in another color and I really wasn't the biggest fan of it, so I wanted to go ahead and get Give another color a try. These are the NYX Sweet Cheeks Cheek Tints, and this is in the color Bombshell. I've tried the Super Coral color. I think I'm maybe not liking it because of the color, so I wanted to use this one too to see if it was just the color or if it's really the consistency I don't like. I'm gonna start with a sponge, and I'm hoping I didn't apply too much. Ooh, okay, that's pigmented. Every time I put blush on, you guys can see that light spot because it's right on my cheekbone, and I personally like to put my blush up a little bit higher on the face. I definitely use too much. That's why I love using a sponge too, because I use a sponge in pretty much every step of my makeup, because if you feel like anything's too harsh, use a sponge. I think I toned it down. I definitely like this color more than the other color. I just think that coral and me were not mixing, but let's see. I'm just gonna use a little bit less on this side. I like this color a lot more. It's a thicker kind of consistency. It's like a mousse almost. I used to put my blush a little bit lower right in here, but I found that if you put it on your cheekbones, it kind of gives you like a natural facelift and the color, the flush of color looks a little bit more natural. I definitely like this color. I think sometimes I can be very dismissive of products if I really don't like them, but if I think that it's some other reason that I don't like the product, I will try another version of it or another color of it again. I like more of a like warmish type of blush color, not like something super bright and pink. That's just not natural looking to me, especially on my skin type. So I like something that definitely pulls a lot more brown, is a lot warmer. I'm just gonna go ahead and set my face and I do have have two powders so I think I'm just gonna do half of my face with one and half with the other and the reason I got two was because I don't know which color is going to look better and they're not the same product matte perfection powder foundation in the color 66 mocha spice this is what the color looks like so I'm afraid this is gonna be a little bit too cool for me I actually just hauled this in my last video or one of my last videos this is the L'Oreal infallible 24 hour fresh wear powder foundation in the color 365 coconut I don't know why I haven't tried this sooner because I love the liquid foundation it's actually one of my favorite more natural finish foundations because it does have a good wearing time. I like to use a powder puff when it comes to pressed powder. I don't mind using these little things that they come with, so that's just what I'm gonna use. I'm really scared that this is not gonna be my color. It's not bad, but it definitely is wool. I have worn with powder if you think that it's not your color. I like to use a powder puff on my whole face and then on the 
forehead, I will not use the powder puff because the powder puff gives so much coverage that it kind of exposes the fact that it's not your color. So I will use just a regular powder brush. And it does have good coverage. I mean, you guys can tell from the cheek. And then I always kind of just like to go over it with the brush to kind of really help swirl it into the skin. And I like using a powder puff too because it soaks into your skin. Not bad. The color's actually better than what I thought it was going to be. I'm just gonna use the L'Oreal Infallible Powder and it also comes with a little compact. The size of my face are different colors, mind your business. Ooh, I think the L'Oreal is a little bit better of a match. It looked really warm at first when I applied it, but blending it out, it's looking, what do you guys think? I think, that this side is a better match. We'll be able to tell from the forehead, so yeah. Always set my T-zone very well. I don't mind too if a powder is not my perfect color as long as it I can blend it into the skin really easily and I did not have that problem with either one of those products. I like both of them. This one I thought was a little bit too warm, turned out to be pretty good. So this one, since it is a little bit cooler, I would use this with a foundation that is more warm in color because the warm and the cool will even out to be neutral. Love both of these, yay! And before we move on, I do wanna look at both sides of my face. Cause see, look, all those little imperfections that I had, they're pretty much all gone now because I used a medium coverage foundation and then a medium coverage powder foundation. Both sides of the face look really, really flawless. They both feel really smooth. Sephora, their actual makeup collection is slept on. I love their concealer. I love this powder. And what I love too is that the Sephora collection products are not very expensive at all. They're very affordable considering that they are higher end products. And I love their lipsticks. And they have some of my favorite lip liners. This is what the face is looking like. I'm actually very happy with how we're looking right now. Anytime I'm using a cream bronzer or a cream blush, set them with a powder bronzer or a powder blush, just like how you set your liquid foundation with a powder foundation. This is very similar to the liquid version, the liquid blush. This is the NYX Sweet Cheeks Powder Blush in the color Bang Bang. I have tried a couple colors from the Sweet Cheeks powder line, and I love every color that I've tried. This one is a little bit more of a dark mauve pink. It intensifies what you've already set, especially if you're somebody who likes to use a powder with coverage. Some people, what they'll do is they'll put on a lot of the cream blush. That way it peeks through, but sometimes that just makes me nervous because my anticipation and like my estimations are usually off. I look crazy. Very pretty color. This is like as pink as I'll go. And see, you can tell that the powder foundations were different colors because look at how the blush is coming off on this side versus it's coming off a little bit darker over here. And I always do this because I think it just helps everything blend together, whether I think it's too harsh or not. I think it just makes it look a little bit more natural. Next, I am excited to try this highlighter because I have also never heard anybody talk about this. Milani, and this is the highlighter duo. It's supposed to be cream and powder and it's in the color 140 double shot. They both feel like powders to me. Very, very pretty. These would be gorgeous eyeshadows. And I love these because I feel like this duo is amazing and would be so pretty for darker skin. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the two colors. Guys, if you're not wearing nose highlighter, I don't know what you're doing because it just brings a whole new dimension to the face. So pretty. I always place the color first with a smaller brush so I can be really precise as to where I want the majority of the color. I will go in with a more fluffy brush. I used to like a really, really blinding highlight and I still do, but just tone down a little bit. Love, love, love. I honestly could have used these on my eyes too. I wonder how those would have looked. I'm still going to dip back into the Nude Mood palette, but I wanna use these in my inner corner because I feel like these would be gorgeous on the eyes. I feel like some of the littlest steps that you do in makeup make the biggest difference. Before I dip back into the eyeshadow to smoke out the low, lower waterline, I actually have an eye pencil and I don't use eye pencils very often. Most of the time I will just use eyeshadow because I'm lazy. This is from the brand Essence and these are their long wear eye pencils and this is in the color Two Hot Chocolate. They're retractable. Those are my favorite types of eye pencils and lip pencils. They're the easiest to work with and I feel like the formula tends to be a little bit creamier and when you're working with the eyes, you don't want anything super drying because it's gonna tug at your eyes and cause premature wrinkles. Very, very creamy. I used to not do any type of pencil in my waterline 
And once I did, I swear to you, I never turned back. It just intensifies the eye and kind of draws more attention, makes it more smoky and sultry and dark. I wanted to go ahead and swatch this for you guys because I mean, like it is so creamy and pigmented. And personally, I prefer brown over black because I feel like black is just a little bit too intense for me. It kind of like almost reminds me of a more gothy look just on me, not in general, versus this brown almost looks black. That same color moody and I'm just gonna smoke out the lower lash line. I honestly wouldn't even mind leaving it like this, but it just looks so smoky and pretty when it's smoked out a little bit. And all you gotta do is just drag a little bit of color on the waterline. All right, guys, I went ahead and just popped on some mascara on the lower lashes. Only thing that's left is lips, and I do have a couple different lip products that I wanna try. Somehow I have accumulated so many lip products that I have had to start combining them and using more than one in one video. I am gonna use the same lip liner for all of these ColourPop and BFF3. I have tried BFF2 and I do like it a lot. I can only imagine that I'm gonna love BFF3. This is a very pretty brown nude. Flower Beauty and this is a scribble stick. This one is in the color 10 Bittersweet. This lip combo is actually really pretty with this eye look. They are matte. They have a nice pigment to them. I wanna go ahead and swatch it on my hand for you guys. Very, very creamy. I think it is more pink, but it's coming off more brown because I used that lip liner, which I kind of prefer for my lips to be like right in the middle of pinkish and brownish. Next, I have a MAC lipstick, and this is a Lester lipstick. This is the color 508 Hug Me. So I'll open it up. Very similar to the color I just used, but actually a little bit more pinky. See now this is pretty too, but this one isn't super matte versus that other one was. And this one actually is a little bit more sheer. Reapplied the lip liner again. These are liquid lipsticks and these are from the brand Oprah Cosmetics. So this first color on top is Barack, this more pinky color. And then this more almost like plummy color is Mocha. I thought that it would be a little bit more brown, but it's actually like a little bit more purpley than what I thought. I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this because it is a little bit pinky, but I think that brown lip liner kind of helped. They're not as pigmented as I thought they'd be, but definitely buildable in color. And even when I swatched it on my hand, this is two coats of the color. It's more of a buildable color. I like the color. I don't know if I like it with these eyes. Very comfortable. If I don't put chapstick on at the beginning of my makeup, I don't even bother because sometimes with some lip liners, if you put chapstick on and then immediately put on the lip liner, it will not go on. But with this pencil, I actually found that it was easier to apply when I had the, when I had just applied the chapstick. I felt like it was a little bit more smooth going on the lips. Lastly, but not least, we're gonna use this color Mocha. I'm hoping that I like it. That way I don't have to rub it off and put on a different color. And then I'm just gonna build it up a little bit more. And I actually thought that I wasn't gonna like this color because it's not like a super nude color. It's more of like a berry color. We have one more product. I gotta set my face. New setting spray. This is the Morphe Mattifying Continuous Setting Mist. I love the original Continuous Setting Mist, so I wanted to go ahead and give this a try. One of my favorite things about their setting spray is that it comes in an aerosol can, so the spray is like really fine. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but when I sprayed it, it kind of sprayed white little specks all over my face. Oh my gosh, please tell me that did not just ruin my makeup. Let me go over my face with this sponge to see if that helps anything. It was like little droplets on my face, which happens sometimes when I first spray on the product, but then it will usually go away after I put a fan on it. That's weird. I love the original in this, so I'll have to use this with a couple other products. It mattified everything. All right, guys, this is today's look. There wasn't anything I think that really flopped. Um, I was a little bit scared in the beginning with the primer, but I wanna go ahead and kind of do like my highlights because I really don't have any lowlights for today's video. If I don't mention it, it doesn't mean that I didn't like it. It just means that it was okay because there was honestly nothing in this video that was super horrible. Things that stood out to me this Catrice Baking HD Powder. I was very impressed with the fact that not only had coverage, but also was very filtering. Lip liner definitely stood out to me. I love the color of this. I love the fact that it's super, super brown. If you are a girl of color, I think that you would love, love, love this for a nude. The Essence Longwear Eye Pencil, very, very creamy, very, very pigmented, easy to work with. Beautiful, beautiful highlighters, especially if you are darker. This color right here reminds me a lot of Topaz from Becca. The concealer that I use to carve out my brows, oh my gosh, you do not need a lot of this at all. It is 
very, very creamy, very pigmented. Both face powders I really, really love. Very blurring and had very good coverage. Really like the foundation. I was expecting it to be a little bit more glowy, but I'm honestly not complaining because I do like a more matte foundation anyways. What I wanna do is try to mix this in the NARS Soft Matte Foundation together and see what I can get with that. Really like the brow pencil too. I thought it was the perfect color. And then lastly, an honorable mention for the cheek products. I think NYX has some of the best powder blushes. I'm gonna speak for the powder blushes because um, this is the only cream blush that I've tried from them that I've liked, but if you are looking for a good affordable blush, try this line, the Sweet Cheeks line, because they have so many different colors. I mean, you will find something that you like, I promise you. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. If you enjoyed, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you tried any of these products, please let me know down in the description. If you tried any of these products, please let me know down in the comments, and also let me know if you plan on trying any of these. If you guys like to binge watch, I do have a whole playlist full of full face of first impressions that I will link right up here for you to watch. And that's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.